Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be discussing Glasser's master theorem, an extremely powerful theorem which can help us solve uh, not too many different types of integrals but it can absolutely destroy some very tough integrals like the one shown on the screen. Uh, we're going to go over some problems and just the general gist of what Glasser's master theorem is so let's jump right into the video. So first off let's discuss what it is. Um, so if we have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of u dx, where u is equal to x um, minus the sum from uh, k equals 0 to n for any n of absolute value of a k over x minus b k, we can say that the principal value, which in general will mean the value of the integral, but for functions like this, it's going to be a little bit iffy. Of this is actually equal to the principal value of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx. I don't know why I have a capital F there. So basically what this means is we can replace this function, which I'm going to discuss more, with just x when we have an integral like this. And so this function essentially just means it's x and then we're, we're subtracting out some reciprocals of x. So for example, you could have minus 2 over x minus 3, minus 4 over x minus e squared pi. It doesn't matter what we're subtracting or adding to x, as long as uh, this number is positive and we're all, always subtracting these and the x is on the bottom there, we can go ahead and replace that. Now I'm not going to go through a whole proof of Glasser's Master Theorem, but I am going to go over some ways that you can kind of see how it works. So first let's take the um, most basic form of this where u is just going to be x minus 1 over x. We're going to show how this works in this case. So we have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x or f of x minus 1 dx x minus 1 over x dx. We're going to substitute u equals 1 over x du equals negative 1 over x squared dx. So we're going to get, or actually we can also write this as dx equals negative 1 over u squared du. That's a little bit easier. And essentially what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to end up, um, once you uh, switch out the bounds and everything, you are going to again end up with the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of 1 over u minus u, 1 over u squared du. And if we go ahead and set u equal to negative u, we're going to end up with the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of u minus 1 over u, 1 over u squared du. So it's really the same thing since this u squared squared, when we set that negative, it's going to end up canceling. And also when we get that negative du, it's going to uh, be absorbed to these bounds right here. So if we go ahead and change this u, just change this as a dummy variable, we can change the name. We're just going to change it to x. So we're going to have x minus 1 over x and 1 over x squared. If we add our original integral here, we'll call it i, to this other form of i, we can, we'll get that 2i equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x minus 1 over x times 1 plus 1 over x squared dx. And notice that this is just the derivative of this. So we can go ahead and make a substitution here and say that 2i, uh, if we say that u equals x minus 1 over x, we're going to end up getting, okay, now this is where it gets a little bit iffy. When we're dealing with the bounds here, we need to split up, since we have a singularity at x equals 0, we need to split it up. So uh, at negative infinity, our bound is just going to be 0. So, or at negative infinity, sorry, we're going to be looking at negative infinity because of that x. And then at 0 minus, we're going to be looking at positive infinity because we have minus 1 over x. And then on the other side, um, if when we look at 0 plus, or the value just above, um, x minus 1 over x is going to be equal to negative infinity again, because we have negative 1 over x. And then when we go all the way to positive infinity, the only thing that's going to matter is this x term, and we're going to be looking at the integral from 0, negative infinity to infinity. And of course, on the inside, we're just going to have f of u du. 
And so since we have two of the same integral here, it's really just two times this integral. We can go ahead and cancel on the two on each side. And we have proven that these are in fact equal to one another. So this shows that this is true for x minus one over x. But what if we have more terms? What if we have x minus one over x minus one over x minus one, and we have more things like that. Now I'm not gonna go through a full proof, but I wanna kind of show you guys how that works. So let's say, for example, instead of, we're going to let this case, uh, u is going to be x minus 1 over x minus 1 over x minus 1. So in this case, we're going to have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x minus 1 over x minus 1 over x minus 1 dx. So if we go ahead and make the same substitution as before, u equals 1 over x, or actually we'll just do negative 1 over x. And we're going to get dx equals 1 over u squared du. We're going to get u minus 1 over u minus 1 over negative 1 over u minus 1. And this simplifies to u over negative 1 minus u, or you can just make this all positive, plus 1, right? And so this will become 1 minus 1 over u plus 1. And we, are, we all have that 1 over u squared du. Now we have this u plus 1 here that we don't want. So let's go ahead and set v equal to u plus 1. And then nothing really changes with the bounds since we're still negative infinity to infinity and our differential is the same. So we're going to get the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of v minus 1 over v minus 1 minus 1 over v. And you'll notice that this is exactly the same as what we had before. And only our differential is now going to be 1 over v minus 1 squared dv. Now, we're, uh, if we went ahead and did the exact same thing, but instead of setting u equal to 1 over x, we did u equals uh, negative 1 over x minus 1, and then made this some uh, pretty much the same substitution over here. I think it would be u minus 1. We would end up getting, uh, so this is equal to i, right? And this is also equal to i. We would get that another form of i would be um, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of v minus 1 over v minus 1 minus 1 over v oh, times 1 over v squared dv. And I've just, I've tried that out. I'm not going to show it right here since it's a little bit iffy, but that's basically how that works. Now, if we add together all, all three version of, versions of i, we'll get that 3i equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of v minus 1 over v minus 1 minus 1 over v of 1 plus v minus 1 squared plus 1 over v squared dv, right? Um, and then we could do our substitution, u equals v minus 1 over v minus 1 minus 1 over v, and this is just the derivative of that, so we would get 3i equals, and again, we have this uh, iffy bit with our singularities here, so we need to figure out, we split this up, this region into the integral from negative infinity to uh, 0 minus plus the integral from 0 minus to, or sorry, 0 plus to 1 minus, then the integral from 1 plus to positive infinity. And when we go ahead and plug those in at negative infinity, we're still going to be at negative infinity. At 0 minus, we're going to be at positive infinity. At uh, 0 plus, we're going to be at negative infinity. At 1 minus, we're going to be at positive infinity. And it's going to be the same thing for our last one. So we're going to end up having three times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of u du. You can see that this also worked out for this case. I'm not going to go over the general case because we definitely have don't have time to do such a large proof in uh, what I hope should be a relatively short video. But um, and also, I, I honestly don't know how to prove the general case. I mean, it's pretty clear to me that it's going to work out, and no matter how many terms you have, but I really just don't know how to prove it. So uh, let's go ahead and look at some examples of how we can actually use this. So one really cool example is from the MIT Integration B. It's a pretty famous integral um, because, I, it, I mean, it stumped the people in the Integration B. I never would have known how to use it. But essentially, it's the integral from 0 to infinity of such squared of x plus tan x 
dx. And of course, nobody knew what the hell to do with this because it's just like, it's a crazy function. Uh, the x plus tan x just throws everyone off. There's no real expansion that you can do here. And the trick is to use Glasser's master theorem. And the trick in this is that we know that cotangent of x is equal to the sum from n equals uh, negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x plus k, or n, I guess n pi, right? And if we go ahead and substitute in tan x, uh, essentially this is the same as cot of pi over 2 minus x, and we're going to get the sum of 1 over pi over 2 plus n pi minus x. And if we can go ahead and reorganize this as negative x, negative 1 over x minus n pi minus pi over 2. And you'll notice that now if we add x here, this is an appropriate function for applying Glasser's master theorem meaning that the integral from negative infinity to infinity of this function, which is x plus tan x, uh, x plus, x plus, is the same as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x. So we're going to write, rewrite this as one half the integral from negative infinity to infinity, since uh, x plus tan h x is odd and such squared is even. And so we can actually re just rewrite this as one half the integral from negative infinity to infinity of such squared of x dx by Glasser's master theorem. And this just becomes a really handy one because uh, we end up getting tan h x and then tan h of infinity is one, tan h of negative infinity is negative one, you subtract them and then you divide by two. So overall, technically a very, very easy integral, but you have to know this very amazing theorem. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that tangent x is uh, x plus tangent x satisfies Glasser's master theorem. So you can go ahead and replace x plus tangent x with just x when you're integrating from negative infinity to infinity. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go over one more pretty cool use of this uh, awesome theorem. So one tough class of integrals uh, to evaluate is rational integrals. And the main reason for this is usually we're going to be doing nasty partial fractions that are just not fun to deal with. However, with Glasser's master theorem, we can um, actually skip the whole step of factorizing and we can really easily, um, in a lot of cases, sort of dumb down our integrals into a more easily uh, evaluatable fashion, so to speak. So in this case, we want the coefficient at the front and the back to be the same because then we can write this polynomial in terms of x minus 1 over x. So we're going to say x equals fourth root of b times some function uh, u. And dx equals the fourth root of b du. So we're going to end up with integral from 0 to infinity, or rather 1 half integral from negative infinity to infinity. And this will just be b to the 1 fourth also from that. 1 over b x to the fourth plus square root b a x squared plus b du. Uh, I'm just changing the name back to x again because that's just easier for me. And we can just divide by b here and we're going to have b to the negative 3 fourths out here. And on the inside we're going to have just x squared plus square, uh, I guess, a over square root b. And then this is just going to be 1. Next, we want to write this all in terms of x plus 1 over x, so or x minus 1 over x. So we can go ahead and divide by 1 over x squared on the top and bottom. So we're going to get b. So we're going to have 1 over x squared on the top, and then we're going to have x squared plus 1 over x squared plus a over square root b times just nothing, right, dx. And then we're going to substitute because we don't want this 1 over x squared on the top, u equals negative 1 over x, and then du is just going to be 1 over x squared dx. Our bounds are going to end up being the same, p to the negative 3 over 4 over 2. So we're just going to have du over, we have this x squared plus 1 over x squared, which is going to become u squared plus 1 over u squared because of the symmetry. But I just want you guys to notice that u minus 1 over u squared equals 
u squared plus 1 over u squared minus 2. So we can just go ahead and rewrite this on the inside here as u minus 1 over u squared plus 2 plus a over square root b. And uh, I don't know why I put parentheses there. And this is going to make it super easy to use because using Glasser's amazing master theorem, we have gone from a fourth order polynomial in the bottom to a second order one in u minus 1 over u. And since uh, because of Glasser's master theorem, we can just replace this with u squared. So this is a relatively simple uh, uh, arctangent integral. And the overall answer is going to be integral from 0 to infinity of dx over x to the fourth plus ax squared plus b equals b to the negative 3 over 4 times pi over 2 square root 2 plus a over square root b. So this is a pretty useful formula. I'm going to be using it in a very, very soon upcoming video on an absolutely stellar integral, so make sure to tune in for that one. Um, and yeah, so Glasser's Master Theorem is not one of those things that you're going to see popping up in every single integral, like Feynman's trick, but it's definitely a handy tool to know, especially if you want to do something like an integration B, because it can absolutely kill really tough integrals like this one, or anything that has x minus 1 over x, x plus 1 over x, you're going to find Glasser's Master Theorem is the way to go, so it's definitely a good tool to have in your pocket. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and I hope you get to use this theorem in some of your integrals soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.